Hey everyone and welcome to another episode of my LEGO Train Automated Container Terminal. I finally managed to build a crane that is reliable and somewhat fast. So I'm very happy and excited to show you a container movement sequence in this video. So what are the changes that I've made? A problem with the previous version was that the supports were too far away from each other, which made the crane a bit fragile. So I've now put the supports closer to each other and made an overhang above the railway. And by doing so and adding these extra beams that you see here, I made the crane more rigid and um, it doesn't twist as, as much as it did in the previous version. Um, next to that I also changed the rail system that you see here. In the previous version I used these little guys here which are basically just rims which I placed on tiles which were running like that which gave a, a bit of friction so then I tried these wheels here which I applied on the rail here like that because they th these wheels don't make as much sound as the other wheels that I'm using here but the problem with this system is that um, when the crane twi twists a bit and it does that because I've now motorized it only one side you'll see that the wheels will rotate a bit and since this is rubber it will give a lot of friction and it won't go so that's why I need to use these hard plastic wheels and the, these wheels squeak a bit but they do the job just fine another thing that I've changed is the drive system of the crane I've now only on one side a uh, drive motor and um, so I don't have any trouble with uh, motors not running on the same speed and so on so I'm very happy about that um, I tried to use a combination of these two gears so this gear was here and this gear was on the motor but then when I initialized the crane by moving it far away to the left it comes to here to a stall and the system detects that but the motor was too strong in that configuration so I got a broken gear <laughs> so I needed to ch change that so I changed the uh, gears a bit and now it works just fine but it's still very strong so when you um, initialize the crane by moving it all the way to the left you'll see that it's moving pretty slow and that's because if I make it run faster uh, the motor gets more power and it will actually push this one over so that's why I do it very slowly it doesn't matter for the operation since I only reset the motors the initializing phase at the beginning of an unload and load action so when I've actually unloaded a complete train and loaded it again then it goes to its initial state and at the same time the serviced train needs to leave the uh, terminal and another train needs to enter it and in the meantime I can go slowly initialize the crane again it's very important that I do that since the rotational encoding system on the motors is not 100% watertight by using the motors you create a bit of an offset which is very small but in the end it builds up so when you do a lot of container movement without actually resetting the motors the offset will build up so much that the crane won't be aligned with the wagons anymore and while well, you get crashes and stuff like that so that's why I need to initialize it once in a while another thing that I needed to change and that I learned the harder way uh, was changing these beams over here I needed to lower them since that's where the crane will be passing with a container going from or to the railway and to or from the monorail so I learned that the hard way <laughs> um, there was a, a bit of a crash uh, but I fixed it and I lowered the beams and um, it's just fine now there is still a small risk of failure and that is when the pressure of the compressor isn't high enough so the arm doesn't go up as high as it should go then you can cause a crash uh, but for now if the pressure is above 35 psi that won't be a problem alright so now I'm going to show you a sequence of container movements 
So I'm now gonna enable the system and uh, let's see how it performs. So we gotta wait for some pressure now. There it is. Well, as you can see, it moves very slowly now. But as I explained, no worries. This only happens once in a while. Of course we have a fail. <laughs> right. So there was a little glitch in the system, um, I changed it, I hope I fixed it, and um, let's run it, see what it does. So the uh, compressor is already on pressure now, it's now resetting the motors first. Yeah, yeah, I know, I know, it's slow. And now the actual program starts. As you can see, this one is a bit off, so I need to have a look at that. And the same one is that. That one is also a bit off. Alright, that is the procedure well as you can see the containers are a bit off maybe I don't know if you can see it on the video but if I take it you know that's the way it should be and also this one like that so they were twisted a bit like that so I think that the crane is also a bit twisted all right shall we try again let's have one more look Yes, that's it. That one is still off. All right. Well, as you can see, that one is still a bit off. Um, I don't know why. I think the crane itself, maybe there's too much mechanical play in it. Um, I don't know if I can fix it or not. It shouldn't be a very big problem. Maybe if I make the crane go a bit further to the back, then it'll put the container on the right spot. So um, I'm gonna add a few degrees extra. So the motor turns a few degrees extra and see how it does. So in the next episode, we're gonna do a duration test. We're gonna do the sequence that you've seen in this episode, but then 10 times. You know, doing a sequence like you've seen in this video just once, that's something. 
but if the system needs to do it 10 times with the same precision, that's a whole other game. So that's going to be interesting. Um, I'm not going to test it before enabling the camera. And since my experience tells me that the first Eurasian test is never a good test, <laughs> that's going to be fun, I guess. So that's what we're going to do in the next episode. I hope to see you then. Thank you for watching. If you haven't subscribed yet, please do so. And uh, see you next time. Bye.